Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to save a render image and how to create a video from an animation, means render an animation in 3D Studio Max. Before you start, you should have a previous knowledge about the basics of 3D Studio Max. For this, you can check my other tutorials on the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. In this tutorial I will use the same animation of the tutorial on how animate objects. Well, as you can see, if you click on the play animation button, here, the objects start moving. If you want to know how to create an animation on 3D Studio Max, you can check my other tutorial about how to animate objects, on the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. First of all, remember that an animation is created when you quickly see a sequence of static pictures, ordered in the way that creates the illusion of movement. Here, you can see some pictures. Each picture is a frame of the video. This video has 12 frames and shows those in a second. So this looks in movement. With more frames the video looks more fluid. The number of frames per second in a video is called frame rate. Exist two main formats of video in TSC used in America and Japan that use 29.97 frames per second, and the format PAL used in Europe that use 25 frames per second. As I showed you in previous tutorials, render a single image is simple, just click on the button at Render Production. The program shows this window. Here the program is producing an image of good quality, of the current frame in the scene. If you want to save this image for use it later in a photo audition program or anything you want, you only have to click on the save button, here. And on this window select a destination on your computer for the image. And, write a name for your image. And, clicking on this arrow. This list appears and here you can select the format you want for your picture. As you can see, here are many file formats. This time I'm going to choose JPG, for no special reason, just as a very popular format. And click on save. This window that appears is different depending on the format that you did select. So, adjust the values, in this case the values are selected for best quality of the image. And click on OK. And is ready but is only a single picture. To render a video, you have to change the render setup configuration. In the right upper corner of the window you can find the rendered functions buttons. This button enters the scene. This shows the last image. And this is the render setup button. Here you find several options to optimize the results but let's try something pretty simple. Just to create the video. Here, in the common tab you find these options. In the time output, by default is selected single, so this only renders a single frame of the animation. If you select active time segment, this renders all the frames in the animation. This animation has 200 frames. See. So this renders all the frames from the 0 to the 200. Here is the option of every number of frames, now is in 1, so this renders each frame on the animation. With 2. This renders from the frame 0 to the 200, but no all frames, but every 2 frames. And so on. Selection range, you can customize your own range. For example, only render in your video from the frame 0 to the 100. In this case this means only half animation. Or selecting frames, you only render to your video the frames that you indicate here. Well, I'm going to select active time segment to render the entire animation. And in every number of frames. One, to render each frame. Now on the section of output size, you can select a resolution for your video or images. The resolution indicates us the quality that is an image. Any digital image is made of pixels. A pixel is a little square of a particular color. A lot of these little squares or pixels, creates an image. If you have low resolution the quality of the image is poor, like the image at left, this image has only 32 pixels within 50 pixels at height. And is not clear at all. The next picture is the double of pixels. But still blurred. With more pixels, the image looks more detailed and clear. Now, I selected a resolution of 640 by 480. That is the size of the image that we just render, now, if you select single, up here. And, click on render, down here. This renders our scene, but the image is a bit small. For the output size, I selected custom. And in this place you can indicate the image size you want. For example 1280 of width. And 720 of height. As we select single, again, you can click on render. And see the results. And this image is bigger and clearer. 
you can save it the same way as I showed you. Also, you can select a preset format, clicking here. In this list you find cinema formats, IMAX formats, NTSC and PAL also refers to definition, and high definition television formats. I'm going to select this high definition format. Once selected, this four buttons change. And you can select the definition you want. Note that the height and width changes. Like this. And click on render. This image is more clear than the other because it's bigger. As we want render a video, select active time segment, here. Well, now if you move it down. Clicking on an empty space and keeping pressed. Move up. Also, you can use the mouse scroll wheel. Anyway, underneath this, is the section of render output. To indicate the destination on your computer, for our video file, click on Files. In this window, find a destination folder on your computer. Once you have selected the destination folder, at the bottom, type a name for the video. Click this arrow. And in this list, select the format you want for your video. I'm going to select AVI, because it's a very popular format and works in practically all computers. You can click on Setup, below it, to change the settings for the video. Or, click on Save and, the same window appears. This window will be different depending on the format that you select. In this window you can change the different options for your video. In this case, you can compress the video to make it take up less disk space. Clicking this arrow, appears this list of the video codecs installed on your computer, for you this list can be different. If you select uncompressed, the video take up much hard disk space. So I'm going to select other. For example this one, DVX codec, that gives excellent results and is free, you can download it from www.dvex.com. When you use a codec, you should configure it using the setup button, here. But first let's configure our video settings. So, click on cancel. Again, cancel. Without closing, click on time configuration here. In this window I can set different things for our video. At the beginning of this tutorial I told you about the video modes as NTSC and PAL. Here you can select if use the NTSC video mode with 29.97 frames per second or the PAL mode with 25 frames per second or the film mode with 24 frames per second. Or you can create a custom frame rate here. Let's select a custom frame rate of 30 frames per second. Click in, OK. Back in the render setup window. In the section of render output. Click on files. As we did it before, type a name for the video. Select a destination for the video. Click here, and select the type of file extension for the video, obvious here. And clicking on setup. You can choose if compress or not compress the video and what code it to use. Let's see this coded. Deep example. Click on Setup. Appears the setup window for this codec. This window is different depending on the codec that did you are selecting the version of the codec. This is a very configurable codec, but let us keep the thing simple. You can configure it clicking on the main tab and choosing a profile here. You can choose a for home theater, or a 720 HD profile, or the 1080 HD profile. The 720 HD profile is for a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels, this is the same resolution as we select before. The 1080 HD profile is for a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, is the resolution used in the full HD TVs. I'm going to select 720 HD. Because the resolution for this profile is 1280 by 720 pixels at 30 frames per second, and coincide with the resolution that I choose before and with the frame rate that we did just choose in the time configuration window. Well, click on OK. In this window, again, click on OK. And, here click on Save. Now it is time to render the video. At the bottom of the render setup window is a big button, the render button, this one. Click on it. Appears two windows. The small one is the rendering window, here you can see the progress of the rendering. You can see the total progress, and the progress of the current frame. 
This is a pretty simple animation and even can take a lot of time to render this small video, most when we are using HD settings. Well, just wait until ends. But the final results looks good. This is the final result.